Welcome to the letter. Uh, this game uh, was brought to me <clears throat> on request. So I'm not sure how well a visual novel is going to work um, on stream. But um, I promised a good friend of mine that I'd stream it and I'll stream it. Uh, at least some of it. Um, the it's for the most part narrated, uh, so that's great. Um, but yeah, um, it's supposed to be a pretty spooky one. So let's uh, get into it. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, starting off strong. The Ermine Guard Mansion. It was built for Lord William by Lazy Pfft, Lady Elizabeth Ermine Grand of Lux. Wow, a lot of proper nouns. Of Luxburn, humble ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Both are well known for their compassion and generosity never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a small, sleepy village grew into a prosperous, bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hands of a great plague. <sniffs> mm. The riches and legacy were henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermagerd. Dot. Dot, dot. The mansion has stood. The mansion has stood since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. Ah, that was a lot louder than I was expecting it to be in my headphones. And that's when it began. Surrounding villages spoke of seeing spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, of cries and howls that filled the night, and hearsay of a mysterious woman roaming the hollowed halls aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after four hundred years these stories remain, much like the house itself. Whispers about the once great house and legend of its curse still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Blair Realty Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Dot, dot, dot. Good luck. <laughs> Isabelia. Ah, hello. Hello, Isabella. Are you there? I suppose. I suppose I'm Isabella. A faint jittery voice comes from the other end. Take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that. So hurry up and get here. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since like forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Chi Chi's in chat. I'm surprised. This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that. They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. No offense, sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. Uh, believe it or not, it's better 
to be careful. Right. You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. That's oddly specific. Our mansion is where we'll likely find another one. I can feel it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that happened. Uh, over. yep. Loosen up. Wait, just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see Man, I'm super glad I'm not having to read all this. She hangs up before I can respond. Rose, still charming as ever. And who was that? I look up from my phone to see Rebecca. Becca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. The one who trained you. You're working together again? Just for this property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down Anselm Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Hold on. Is this the same mansion you've been telling everyone about? Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? You actually went there? And you're going back? Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> as soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca lets out a shot, soft chuckle. What's so funny? Nothing. It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so out of character. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out. Game volume's kind of low. Fix that. Bring up the game volume a bit. Is that better? Here. I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a is huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Plus, listen to this. Briar Realty wants it sold as soon as possible, and the agent cool. who lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus. They never give bonuses like that. I Even want that a would huge make life bonus. So much easier. They're desperate. I'm desperate. It's perfect. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Or Ashton, who we can always let you borrow, and you can pay us <laughs> back whenever. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can already tell what to expect once she has that expression. Becca, I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. Don't judge me! She crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly rises as she begins to scold me. Ooh, ooh. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Stop eating junk. They're cheap, but they're not good for you. Look, stop attacking me, IRL, in the please. Hospital if you keep at it. Oh, hello, decision. Hmm. Uh, eat other things. Sure, we we. Eat hey, I eat stuff. other things too. Relationship status. Oh, okay. There's lots of stuff here. Crackers. Journal. Um, that says help a bunch of times. Oh, see, I don't love that. I'm not in love with that. Uh, I'm going to try to ignore it. She's Filipino. Neat. Okay, well. Uh, when I upload the VOD, you can pause that if you want to read it. Uh, but yeah, moving on. That's wild. I fold my arms across my chest, mimicking her posture, and giving her the best frown I can muster. The same one I'd use with my younger siblings when they were being difficult. Instead, she only raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me. 
and I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. The instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. Stop You're attacking just exaggerating. Me. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? I'm not just living on instant noodles alone. I've got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. Perfect. I don't know why hamburgers in your pantry, but okay. Becca's wrinkling her nose, and by the time at the end of the small list, she even went a little green on the last one. Oh, she's actually a little green. I would have laughed a little at that if I didn't know it would only lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? <laughs> I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. I don't want a repeat of last year. What happened In last case, year? Those are still not exactly healthier choices, Belle. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny, distant memory. When she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words from her. Sometimes, it's just better to let Becca talk until she runs out of things to say. I thought we were Becca. No, we're Bella. That's right. But when she turns her attention back to me, there's only warmth in her smile. Beauty. <sighs> What am I going to do with you? Feed me. She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting from something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when you're like this. You don't have to keep eating the same thing. You do when you're Didn't broke. I tell you before, you're always free to reheat my leftovers. Thanks, Becca. I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep babying me. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. Bitch, I'll take free money whenever. You what you earned hard for yourself. Ah, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. I nod in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. Get out of my face. But I'm pretty certain I will never take that offer. Ever. It has nothing to do with my pride. I've simply seen plenty of times of how friendships can take a turn for the worse just because of a few unpaid debts. I don't want something like happening something like that happening between me and Becca. We may argue about a lot of small, petty things, like how husky my inner monologue is, but she already feels like a real sister to me, and I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial as me being poor and broke. Becca's movements when she takes a quick glance at something behind... ...staffs me out of my thoughts. It's well, weirdly phrased. Well, chit-chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. You bet! With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins sifting through pages of a rather thick history book. It's probably next week's lesson plan. Wait. Is she the teacher? Or trying, at least. Wait, no, we're 26. What are we doing in the classroom? Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive on whatever's on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily, and her hand hastily goes to her mouth to stifle the sounds. Th ah, this is precisely why I followed her here. Coronavirus. For someone who makes a habit out of worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Not that... I or anyone I would know would know hey, anything about you that. you sure you can manage on your own? I mean, you're still a bit feverish. Ah, oh, hush, dear. Don't you worry about me. Don't tell me what to do! I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. I level her with a flat look. She's had a cold for a couple of days now. Something about the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take a week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. 
She even left the medicine her doctor prescribed. Look who's being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that rose girl wait for you. I'll call you if I still feel bad. And you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. Oh, yes. She offers me a reassuring smile, and I can only sigh. Why do I even bother? There's no stopping her once she's decided on something. Defeated, I reach inside my bag to pull out the same bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at it warily, and I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is the one thing I'm not letting her have her way. All right, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. I'll see you later, okay? There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. Rebecca! <laughs> okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. You're damn right. I mean, before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation and my short visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. I hail a passing taxi to take me... Oh, um... Uh, no, that said something. No, come back. As soon as I leave the school grounds. The mansion is some ways out on the countryside, but I don't think I'll have... But I don't have trouble giving the driver directions. That's the most unbelievable part about this whole game. Apparently, everyone in Luxembourg City knows about it, including every bit of rumor surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of its name is enough for locals to give you a cautious, sidelong glance. I learned that the hard way when I first commuted there, and it only boosted my belief that there's something more to the house. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back up in the market has caused quite a stir. Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I avert my eyes from the window once the building shrinks in the distance. Buildings, plural. We get a glimpse of the countryside soon, although a quick glance at my watch tells me we're still a few minutes away from our destination. Might as well get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. Life has ways of messing things up like that. Halfway through reading my pa the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and my shoulder. It's probably just Rose again anyway, and certainly not a Rose? demon or ghost. Yes, again. That voice. Ash. Bingo. Hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. You mean that thing with Zack? Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first but I get off of work at 7. Open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengarde Mansion? You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. Shut up! Ash chuckles, and I can't help but roll my eyes upon hearing it. <laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> Ash hole. I'll see if I can pick you up. Beautiful. Whatever. Bye. 
Stupid asshole, always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. Those are more words. No! They go away so fast. Uh, Friday, October 21st. It takes a few more minutes to finally reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit it, the property property pfft, the property does look wonderful from the outside. It, yeah, it's a lot nicer than it did in the intro screen. Yet, despite all of this, it does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. The surrounding area is usually silent, and the only rustling of the leaves can be heard as the occasional breeze passes. While Anselm Village is just a few miles away, everybody keeps their distance on purpose. Perhaps out of fear, the horror of falling under the mansion's curse. Somehow, it makes me feel sad. The lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be. If it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. I'd say Are you spooky. To go inside uh, that place, Missy. Oh yeah, that was some plan. The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes away from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. A beat passes while I wait for him to say more. But his only answer is a non-committal hmm. Belatedly, it occurs to me that he must be waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself for spacing out, and promptly hand him the fare with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I've paid, but there's a hesitant expression on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. I wonder what it could be. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace. And I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in that house doesn't want to either. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. I mean, no can you imagine the property it. taxes? You Come on, it? it's a big house. You, never know. he drives off after, but what he said has left a foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathe out a heavy sigh as I approach the house. After hearing enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that tur that turn. But I'm already here. Backing out is completely out of the question. <laughs> it's not like I have a choice, anyway. If I want to get that bonus and commission, one way or another, I've got to sell this property. The door is ajar when I get to it. However, while my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hand. A lot of weirdly phrased sentences here. Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. <laughs> dangle. <laughs> we may be the only people here, but this early? This early, but I've never known her as someone careless. Entering what greets me inside leaves me gaping? What, what did she say? Certainly can't be gaping. Uh, there, there must be... Backlog. No, no, it was gaping. <laughs> Entering what greets me inside leaves me gaping. Yeah. She could have said anything else. Like, I mean... Unless, I guess, like, that's a more common British expression, I guess. Like, but no, it was just... I really don't know. They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antique, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern-day lords and ladies. 
but no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. As though it is going to eat you alive! <laughs> <clears throat> if you ask me, they should have just listened uh, to what the other people have been telling them and leave this place alone. Some things in this world are better left alone, never to be disturbed, to disturbed ever again. Rose? Oh, I love the echo. That's really good. I call out. Rose, I'm here. I'm here. Where are you? My voice echoes softly throughout the hallways. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me, no matter how deafening the silence is. Just call her! You have a phone! She could be all the way on the other side of the property, for all I know. Thank you. Quickly reach for my phone and dial her number. But... Uh, Nani the heck? She just called me earlier. What do you mean has not been recognized? <laughs> Same! Y exactly! You're just chatting! It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? <laughs> or... Or maybe the ghost did hear us talking and spirited her away, right? Right! Dot, dot, dot. No, Isabella. Don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. But alas, a ghost ate my phone! <laughs> But to no avail. Oh boy. I have a very bad feeling about this. Rose? If you can hear me, please come out. Come on, I love her Rose, little portrait. It's, it's very like you know, I'm spooked right now. Creeps? No answer. This isn't going to work. This place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. Taking a couple of se steps forward, I notice something move move above the grand staircase. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? I doubt it. Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Not coming out, huh? Fine. I'm going. Wise decision. Okay, that's a lie. Ah, come on. Just just go home. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's all right. Dude, she'll be fine. Growing desperate, I try to contact her number again. Come on, please. Give me something. Please, Lord. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, hey, it's ringing. Yes, finally. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond. There's also heavy static coming from her side. I sincerely hope it doesn't cut off again before I can get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. I'm addict. What? She's an addict? Oh, well, the first step to uh, uh, recovery is admitting you have a problem, so it's good for her. You know? But such a supportive friend. Man, do I really need to go up there? How deep inside the mansion the attic is? There's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. Oh, attic. Got it. But why is she there? Out of all places, she just has to go and make me fetch her in the creepiest room of this place. I don't know. Probably the basement's the creepiest room. I would imagine. Basements are creepy, dog. Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? Whatever. I'll just go. But, like, 
But like real talk though, like the basement's gotta be creepier than the attic, right? Because like worst case scenario, like if you're in an attic, like you can like bust through a wall, right? And like, you know, take the chances with the ground below. But like if you're in a basement, there's usually one way in and out, right? Like basement's gotta be creepier. Like in general. The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up the staircase. My legs wibble-wobble as I mentally curse the fact I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange, abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. Oh, let's look at the birds! It branches out to two major wings of the mansion. The east wing, west wing. There are two attics here, one on each side. But the east one has been converted into a storage room of sorts, and somehow I find it least likely for Rose to wander there by herself. Why? Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms. Uh, okay. So I head toward the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps, leading to the second attic. So, oh wait. Unlike the grand staircase, though, the stairs of the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones covered with... So, are there four attics? Because it at the top of the staircase, there's an east and west uh, thing that... Maybe I'm... It, it is a mansion. You make a fair point. Uh, two major wings of the mansion. There are two attics, one on each side. East one's been converted to a storage room. So I head to the west wing. There's a simple wooden floor at the end of the hallway. It opens to a small room. Inside is, is steps leading to the second attic but not the one on the east wing. I'm so confused. So there are at least three attics. Perhaps four. At least three. Go be the ghosts definitely uh, are in the spirit of Go Big or Go Home. Absolutely. Unlike the Grand Staircase, though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones and covered with a thick coating of dust that kicks up into the air with every step. So she's not there, because uh, she would have disturbed the dust. Thank God it's still daytime and not night at all. That would be terrible if I were to lose several hours. If it wasn't for all the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. <laughs> with how old this place is, there's no light fixtures to illuminate the cramped passage up. Why they didn't bother to add one when they renovated totally escapes me. Sheesh, they did it with the rest of the house. What? Small bedroom welcomes me at the end. At the end of the attic? Oh, okay, sure, yeah. It looks exactly as it did since the last time I've been here. Full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. Odd. I thought they cleaned everything. Did the crew miss this room? Probably. It is in the third attic. Third attic. Uh, cleanliness is least of my concerns right now. The more past pressing matter is Rose. She's not here, despite all of the dust on the stairs. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, there's just three more attics to check. No, no, it couldn't have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of this estate is doing a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. And I'm sure she said she's here. She was in the attic, but there's three of them, lady. It's not a prank. You're just an idiot. Maybe that phone call was Rose's last message, message to me before the curse got to her. Ugh, shut up, Brain. You're not helping. Real. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? 
Perhaps in one of the other attics? Oh, Jesus. That's very loud in my ear. <laughs> what the hell was that? Thank God I don't have to use the bathroom anymore. Anyway. Can't do this anymore. I'm outies. We must have angered the spirits living here. I knew this disturbing mansion was a bad idea. Disturbing the mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that shit. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. She has a lot of lot of emotions about this. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time. No. No. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who's more fucking realistic to tour people around this haunted ass house. Oh wait, absolutely me. <laughs> Before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Just a check. J just a check for what? What's this? Was it a letter? The ep eponymous letter? My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. There's clearly something on the floor. It looks like... A letter? Pulls up a letter Q. It's like, ah! <laughs> What could this mean? <laughs> Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down and pick it up. Strange. I don't recall seeing this the last time I was here. The last time you were here was right now. A few, a few days back, me and a few other agents inspected the mansion to prepare for today. I'd been the last to look inside the attic and leave. And this certainly hadn't been there before. Someone must have left this room since uh, left it in this room since then. <sighs> Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs leading to the attic, and they were covered in completely in dust. The letter is in exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough. I'm worried that it will fall apart so, uh, so much if I so much as touch it. You're literally already holding it. But with great care, I open and read what shakes and what I read shakes me to my core. What? That's a lot of what? help me, help me, help me. That's spooky. Oh my God. <laughs> Nothing but the words "help me" fills the page. All of it seemingly written with a crimson shaded pen. Yep, that's what it is. Red pen. Nothing else. Nope, nothing else. I gulp. The same phrase is, it goes on and on until... Send this to five people or else. Or else what? Or else these nuts. As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek into the envelope to make sure I'm not missing out on the second page. But there's nothing. So did we just get a chain letter? Oh, please, no. My hands tremble as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. Folding the paper in half, the sight greets me. That, that for something frozen on the side. That's meat feet. Hello, meat feet. A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision, covered in gaping room wounds with skin eaten away to reveal flesh, bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. It's too much. All of it is too much. I want to cry, call for help, but the words catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Of the meat feet. Oh, we gotta look up, right? Like, we, we, we gotta, right? Like, like we, we have to. We, we gotta see what the meat zombie looks like. <laughs> Pray my ass! 
All right, all right, Meat Feet, what you got for me? I need to face it. Whoever, whatever these Meat Feet belong to, I need to face it. And if I'm going to die, if they're going to kill me, at least I know what my killer looks like. A cold comfort. So with it, I really don't think they're going to kill you, man. Like, you're just kind of standing here thinking a lot. So with a deep breath, I summon every ounce of courage I have left in me and shift my, uh, shift my gaze upwards. Oh! Hello! No. Don't hurt me! Uh, I'm thinking I scramble towards the door. I struggle to open it, but it won't budge. Why now? Why won't it open now? My heart sinks as reality dr draws in. I'm locked in. Locked in with that thing! It slowly approaches me as I wrench the doorknob violently back and forth. Oh, tabs! Oh shit, I have a keyboard! Ah! Oh crap, my keyboard's not working! Oh, we're dead! We're dead! Keyboard, now it's not the time! gone. Hold up, I somehow managed to minimize the screen. Hold up. Uh, <laughs> display full screen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, um, well, that was spooky. Um, Yeah, um, my keyboard just did not respond. My keyboard has a really, really bad habit of just not, um, not working. <laughs> uh, so yeah, okay. But apparently, it's, uh, it's one you don't super need to participate in, so, hey, we live in. Okay, um... <laughs> Let's get back to it. <laughs> okay, it's gone. Where is it? Oh, damn it! We stopped too soon! <laughs> oh, we stopped before the jump scare! <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> That's great. Okay. Okay, great. <laughs> I've rinsed the door up back and forth. Uh, Z. Let's... Keyboard. Now is not the time. Ah, thank you. Yes. The door finally swings open and I couldn't have been happier. Wasting no time, I leap out the door and don't look back. <sighs> leap out the window, girl. Jesus. My feet pound against the floor in rhythm with a loud, fast beating of my heart. By the time I run past the hallway and find myself atop the grand staircase, my chest feels so tight like it's going to burst. But that's nothing compared to the feeling of hope the sight of the exit gives me. <laughs> Racing down the stairs, I barely got a breath. A, a laugh escapes me, and... You know, that's absolutely me. Just uh, rest for spook break, then immediately gets jump scared. A laugh escapes me, and... My shoe slips, and I find myself falling! The spookiest spook there is! And I fall, break my neck down the stairs, and I die. Rip. Until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. Ah, more meat feet! My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I fight to stay conscious. Go away. Last thing I see are those meat feet before all I know is darkness. I have a new journal entry. Okay. Cute, cute. Cute. Fine. 
Dot, dot, dot. Save, save, save. F5, I guess, it's probably save. Those were excellent. Save. Save. Jeez. 20? Are you sure? <laughs> Jesus, that's a little excessive. Are... Okay. <laughs> There's a lot to this game, then. A buzz breaks the silence. <laughs> I start to rouse, pulled into consciousness against my own will. I've never felt this tired before. I just want to sleep, but the insistent buzzing, poking and prodding isn't letting me. Timeline thingy I can look at. I don't want no spoilers. Heck that. Trying to, trying to get me to spoil myself? could you? It is does not spoil? Oh, okay. Ah, huh, okay. So, if we would have just looked down... So if we would have just, like, looked down, it would have been fine? We would have just absolutely... Oh, Lord, there's a lot of... Not much branch to it, but... Wow, jeez. Up to fair. All right. Poking prodding isn't letting me. My old mattress may not be the comfiest of places, but that doesn't make me any more eager to wake up. Ah, girl, you are not in your bed. Five more minutes, Becca. I swat away what is nudging persistently at my side. Come on, can I just get a few extra minutes of sleep today? I promise I'll work hard once I'm up. It shows that you... Oh, okay. Got you, I got you. Makes sense. So yeah, like, if we would have saved here... We would have been able to see what happened there. Okay. But that's weird. We did get that game over, though. But it's not showing that as red. Hmm. Weird. A hand lightly taps my cheek, and something cold is suddenly being pressed to the back of my head. Oh, okay. Fair enough. The icy sensation slowly spreads throughout the area, giving me an uncomfortable feeling. Isabella? Isabella? Fog immediately lifts from my mind the moment I recognize the voice and my eyes snap open. There, looking down at me, is Rose. Another woman loiters beside her, but my attention is too focused on my co-agent to even ask why there's someone else with her. Rose's posture just screams worry, although she's keeping a straight face, or trying at least. You think this is funny, Rose? I can't help but feel bad for making her fret. A wave of dizziness washes over me as soon as I try to get up, forcing me to lie back down again. Luckily, the feeling subsides after a few seconds, only until a mild throbbing somewhere at, my, at the back of my head remains. With little assistance from Rose, I push myself upright. She 
She hands me an ice pack and gestures to press it. I suspect a small bump has already formed, if the light ache in the area indicates anything. All right, Isabella, where are we? The Ermengarde Mansion. Why? Ow, my head. And the date today? October 21st? Rose. Oh, Which she's... One? Can you count to 15 in reverse order? 15, 14, 13, 12 teen? No, that's wrong. Same, Why are we though. doing this? Make sure you're not if your injury is in any way serious. This time, I curiously regard the woman standing beside Rose. Regard, regard? It's impossible to overlook her with the way she towers over us. She's not... I mean... And here, I thought Rose is already tall. I mean, she's not, like, that much taller than Rose. Who is she, anyway? One of her, the, the remaining cleaning crew? With how primly dressed she is, I don't think anyone would want to clean in that suit. An expensive suit is that. The gloves alone must have cost a fortune. Her eyes slowly shift between me and Rose, considering with an almost unreadable expression, before finally fixing a sharp gaze on me. I can't help but fold my arms protectively over myself as she does so. She may be far from a cleaning crew, but she certainly looks like our supervisor during evaluation. Just do it, please. If you insist. I eye them both warily, but recite everything as she asked. Rose releases a breath of relief once I'm done. <sighs> you scared me for a moment there. I was about to call for an ambulance. Are you alright? Exasperation soon replaces the dull ache. The memory's a little bit fuzzy, but the attic and... There... there was someone, Rose. In the attic. Someone? You mean a client? Oh, that's unlikely. It, it's probably just one of the cleaning crews. No, they had I meat feet. Them back this morning for some last minute. No, not any of those. They're... Uh, I'm not actually sure. Wait, didn't I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. Both Rose and the lady look at me like I've grown just grown another head. Did I say something weird? Rose quickly casts an apologetic smile at the woman before her. The awkward silence stretches on further. It's her saleswoman smile, the same one she taught me back when I was still her trainee. I should show this to troublesome clients, or just to avoid trouble in general, she is advised. It may also be the same ones that give me when I've done something particularly absurd that may cause us... Um... Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. She takes both of my shoulders, gently squeezes it, and with much patience as, as she much can... As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. You know, Signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single call. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really all right? What happened? Hey, Meg, do you want to get some practice um, uh, managing chat? Because uh, you should deal with that. I... I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you. But you were in the attic, and... and there's... whoever it is. And I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Oh... oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open! We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose! Perhaps it is a concussion. Are you sure you nice. feel fine? We could still call for an ambulance. I could cover for you. Best mod. Mod of the year award. I'm fine. I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't dismiss an important sale because of a minor bump on the head and sighting of an actual, real, physical ghost. An extremely minor bump, but an extremely real ghost. I've had worse when I was a kid. This is. 
Girl, that's not a that's not the flex Besides, you think it is. I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house alone. And in a mansion this big? Well, there's also the part where I may lose the bonus, uh, BRC promise, but that's completely beside the point. Rosie gives me a skeptical look when I turn the cold compress to her and push myself off the floor. And then lean over and vomit everywhere. All over the thousand dollar rug. I have to use the staircase railings to steady myself, but otherwise I'm fine, dude! See? I'm A-OK! -okay. Two of them exchange a worried glance, and Rose assumes a contemplative look. I bite my lower lip in anticipation. If she says no... Alright, you in. A smile threatens to slip out from me. But if I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Clear as day, ma'am. Thanks, Rose. You insisted. But remember what I said, first sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. No questions asked. Just, it's just, just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay she, these kinds of things. Isabella's it's voice actor sounds like someone. <clears throat> Suddenly, a small cough sounds against the walls of the foyer, interrupting our banter. The woman is looking expectantly from the two of us, uh, her stare making me shrink back a little on myself. Here, give me just a second. It's going to drive me insane uh, not to know who that voice actor is, because she sounds a lot like somebody. Hold just a moment.
Okay, we're back. Um, yeah, no, she just apparently sounds like somebody. Um, you know, I, I don't really know who it was. Her name is Amanda Lee. Um, but anyway. The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back a little on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Dot dot dot. Well, she is. But not in the scary negative way. Far from it, actually. Her demeanor simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me probably would have wished to be like her. <clears throat> At our lack of response, she coughs again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. Words get caught in my throat at the sight of it, and Rose, as usual, is swift to catch my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Miss. Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. McCulloch. She hands Rose her business card. Xmail.com. The words interior designer catch my eye as the partner flips as before my partner flips it over. Oh, probably someone interested in the mansion for its 17th century influences then. I wouldn't hold it against... I won't hold it against her, though. Despite the hearsays and remaining uninhabited for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture have been kept completely intact and restored to pristine condition. That would have cost thousands of dollars! Holy shit! I suppose some, some people find that trip to the past feeling appealing. Feeling appealing. After all, with with what it offers, the place could also be a haven for people looking to live somewhere with a classic, historical charm. Miss McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please... Thanks. There's no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glances at me. I And I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blurt out the first question that comes to mind. I'm sorry. Homeowners? I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face, but it instantly disappears under a mask of professional detachment. Yes, Hannah Wright? She hired me to handle the interior design for their new home? This is the Ermengarde Mansion, right? It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Uh, we should probably check with our super, right? Like, that just seems reasonable. <gasps> I could say no. We make our decisions. We should probably check with our super, right? Like, that just feels sensible. Oh, thanks. Is that good? Did she like that? Who's Marianne? Oh yeah, she's Marianne. She likes that. She liked that. Those few moments have given me enough time to clear my head. Well, she's BB. She, she is Bay. I, I I could see that. I could see that. She, she's a cutie. Those few moments have given me enough time to clear my head of any nervousness or confusion clouding it. All right, the auto got taken off. On a rose, though. It is, ma'am. She's a cutie. But we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand my ground. Besides, it isn't like I haven't dealt with awkward situations like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. 
Today's the open house, in fact. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. I if you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. She nods, seemingly deep in thought after I finished. She appears to be a reasonable person anyway. Given the proper explanation, she'd surely understand. I thought something looked odd. Excuse me, I need to call my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. The slight wave of her head, or her hand, she leaves us. That seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gives me for doing a good job, and I can't help but swell with pride. Still, I've already prepared myself to dial the number to our Lux Luxborn office and to check, even if she didn't ask for it. I will be very frustrated if, for some reason, something has already been decided without my or Rose's knowledge. That's a whole new level of unfair, but we've been working hard on this. Moments later, Miss McCullough returns, with a little frustrated... Looking a little frustrated, but with an apology clear in her face. I feel a little sorry for her having to go through all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Fair enough. Certainly. You could stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. And Isabella? I left a I few documents hair in my car. You know where I keep those. Can you please get it for me? Rose takes a glance at her wristwatch before tossing me a set of keys. And hurry! We've still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay, got it. The two of them disappear behind the parlor's door. Their departure brings with it a stillness to keep me company, neither welcoming, welcoming nor comforting. Alone, this is like this, it's impossible not to think of what really happened. I wish the memory isn't as elusive as it I wish the memory isn't as elusive as it normally is. Then again, Rose already said she didn't receive any call from me. Which is kind of fucking wild. Was it just paranoia? A temporary lapse after having heard all those tales about this place? Probably. But then again, meat feet. I want to think of it as such. Better to think of it as such, so I can work in peace. Except a small part of my mind begs to differ. And if I'm going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. Fucking same. I don't know what this what's in this house, and I don't want to know. The keys Rose have just handed me dig into my palm. Its jagged edges creating a shallow shallow ridges on my skin from how hard I'm clutching it. It's a reminder of what I still need to do and why I've taken this job in the first place. Hugging my blazer close to my body. I exit the house to get what Rose asked of me. Just a few more hours, Isabella. Sell the house, get the money. M -m -m money. Oh my! <laughs> okay, that was a uh, good flash there. That was that was good. A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time we officially open the doors. I'm not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women of wealth and status, all dressed to the nines in fancy suits and lovely dresses of varying colors, compose of the medium-sized crowd.
Ugh, sorry, I kind of got choked up there. Uh, their necks, arms, and fingers, adorned with silver and gold, glinting in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancied feathered hats on their heads. I want to see someone with a ridiculously feathered hat. I really hope there aren't any magpies living in the nearby... Living nearby, like in the stories. Those words will have a field day in this. They're murmuring among themselves, looking at the estate's facade, appraisingly, with some arguing about whose mansion has a superior architecture. But most of it stops as soon as Rose calls for their attention. ABB. They don't look pleased to be at being ordered around, but what can they do about it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper, and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. So we are absolutely in the UK. Just wanted to make sure. Hearing this, a few wander to me. They're mostly old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all those stairs. Miss McCullough also joins our group, but what really catches my eye is the elegantly dressed fair as she approaches. It really looked like for just a second that this guy had a mullet, because I was reading the text, and uh, out of the corner of my eye, it really looks like that blonde just kept going. That was probably not a great choice of hair color for him. Uh, really looked like he had a mullet. <laughs> It's also, so nice to finally meet you! When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you! Your confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. Oh, the blush. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. Oh, they must be the clients she was talking about. They might have seen their faces somewhere before. Some magazine? Or the television? I can't quite remember. But then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news, one way or another. I won't be surprised if these two already have. For people who are popular, though, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others, and their simplicity, the couple stands out. The woman in particular is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in my group, especially with, especially the men with wandering eyes. Ooh, ooh. The guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind, though. And if I'm going to be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'd say he's basking in the attention. How lewd. I think they're brother and sister for for the public display of a <laughs> public displays of affection. The matching rings on their fingers just cement the fact that they are indeed a couple. Are are, are you are you okay, Cassandra? Are you having a stroke? Couple or not, what's important is we get this deal closed before the current owners can even think of canceling the listing. I just hope one of the people in my or Rose's group is brave and generous enough to buy this mansion. It would be great. Just cash, just right in your hand. And so, with papers in hand, I lead the way. When they aren't whispering among themselves or going, ooh, and ah, over one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went to the history of the place, I answer them all. More than happy to talk about the art pieces and architecture, mostly. However, I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. Probably a good idea. Not a good material for sales talk, even if the entire population of Luxborn knows about it. Some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals, all of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Even the glass... thing. Colorful ones. Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Especially that one, ma'am. 
It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. By the time I've stopped talking, their attention is already elsewhere. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. I don't know. Isn't it a bit too small? The mystery. You might gray. have to break a wall down to have more room. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? Man, he's not so it low key a douche, right? But isn't it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Get a new story thing? <laughs> What's that? It seemed like I got a new... Story update. Huh. So I guess, like... If we would have gone this route, it would have went that way, maybe? So I didn't make any decisions to get there. Huh. Okay. Whatever. Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. The rest of their conversation gets lost in the chatter of our companions. I don't want to make any assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Oh, please, please, PLEASE let these guys be the one! Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. Oh, how cute! Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been putting into retaining the room's classical appeal. Oh, this is precious! The open hearth at the end of the room in particular looks amazing, like the ones I've seen in fairy tale books. And mad props to the cleaning crew, yo! Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the soot and tar staining the bricks and how much pain in the arse cleaning this will be, they still managed to pull this off. Or make it look presentable, at least. No, I mean, the this is lovely. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. <gasps> oh, don't say anything yet! An underground wine cellar. For the first time, the guy in the gray speaks up. Mr. Luke Wright, my memory supplies from the forms they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard. Since the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in the place. But this time, something lights up in his eyes at the mention of the Undercroft. The Untercroft. What's so interesting about the basement? I really don't understand rich people sometimes. Right now, he just gives me the impression of a child who's seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I've always found it cute whenever I see children act that way. My younger siblings, especially. On a grown man? Well... It's almost funny. <laughs> yes, sir. It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. <laughs> Truly. And the room. How Holy shit. Like, okay, I know nothing about wine cellars. Let it go on the record. I am a poor boy from a poor family. But 11,000 bottles of wine? Holy shit! I think I've been to liquor stores with less wine than- Most liquor stores I've ever been to have had less wine than that in them. That's- That is a ludicrous made-up number of bottles of wines. Who cares how the room was built? It's as big as the fucking mansion. 
The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection in if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love. Didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? Perhaps you could start with. Uh, you have the room for storage, you man. You know we're going to need space for that, darling. And this isn't big enough? If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. We I'd were say. told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say anything further. His wife, however, seems really pleased that he started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's minds work, but I sure as hell know a lot about lot how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score! I can't wait to tell Rose. The rest of the tour goes by without a hitch. After more than half an hour, we're able to cover almost every room in the ground floor and are heading to the parlor. Funny, the first time BRC had to survey the property, I kept complaining to Rose how big it is. Now I can't even bring myself to care, no matter how much my feet hurt. Yeah, you're gonna make it like a million dollars today or something. Maybe it's just my excitement over a possible sale? Yeah, I'd say so! How cute. We reach the parlor and an odd feeling washes over me. I don't like the way that carpet in the background looks. It starts off with small goosebumps on my skin, a feeling of being watched intently. Whispers in my ear and shadows dancing, lurking in the corner of my vision. Dark silhouettes that are gone when I turn to look. A chill settles down my spine, making me feel sick, and I start to break out in a cold sweat. I... I can't do this. I need to sit down for a moment. The old ladies in the group have been requesting for a break anyway. If I can just... Excuse me? Everyone? We... We will be taking a 15 minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. I let them sit while I retreat to a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I probably just caught Becca's cold. Don't think about it. I'm left alone for a good while, some words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer. <laughs> Until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello, you there? Y yes ma'am? Oh, look at you! Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting! I'd fucking say Not so. No problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker! Anyway, Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? My brain completely stops. The sick feeling plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? She looks at me expect expectantly as I struggle to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I... you see... <laughs> Look, lady, it really depends how fast you can rent a U-Haul and get all your shit over here. Like, I mean, it's really not up to me how fast you can move in, but, like, as soon as the paperwork's done and we have the money, like, I, really, it's cool. Like, you do you, you know. At, at that point, it's your, your problem. But we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. One billion dollars! <laughs> A sale would be great and all, but... 
She stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as if, as if she's tasted a particularly sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. One, two and billion dollars? This place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. Oh hell yeah, cat squad, let's go. There's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but what's wrong with cats? Cats are great. Cats are lit. More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. Then fill it up with no, dogs! This is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon. Some it kind of gift! So wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Hey, Megan. You should take the hint. My wife is in the room with me Why, and watching the stream. I can offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. <laughs> I... We actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk Our? here by ourselves. <laughs> what would the, the people okay, it is think, the guy. darling? Okay. Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. I try not to wince when her nails dig into my shoulder. I can't help but send an imploring look to Miss McCullough, who only gives me an apologetic smile and shrug. Like, it keeps saying it's updating the story, but, like, nothing's happening? Yeah, it's... Yeah, there's supervisor, story update, story update, okay. I have no input on this, though. So, I guess, like, I, I have to go and, like, choose this route and, like, I guess make uh, McCullough not like me? Huh. Okay. Weird. Weird that it does that. I'll just smile and shrug. Uh, yeah, I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out. She wastes no time taking the papers from my hand and shuffles through the bunch. Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry with me for letting her do that. Wonderful. And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, Mom. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. <laughs> it's nice. Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'll be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors too, and... What's this? Oh no! She found the letter! Oh, and a confusion of look and disgust appears on her face, turning yes. to her husband. Uh, an interesting work of art. Well, three Not people taste, down. Though. I'm sorry. Darling, Buttercup, art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. It looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Shush I'm up. a prop from a D-list horror Let film. Girl do what she pleases with. Uh, what do they call this? Oh, forget about it. At the very least, it's not as dreadful as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your tastes. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. It has to always work with a palette. I'm quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this... form. It's my turn to be puzzled. 
What do they mean? Rose and I double-checked everything. Are their papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I don't want to mess this up. But the way Ma'am Hannah's leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back on her face when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Performance anyway, art, sweetheart. Saying... It's just performance art. I don't hear the rest of what she says after that. I only stare down at the paper at the letter in my hands. They said the name of the thing. All right, everybody, let's pack it up. Go home. My sides crinkle in my grip as my breathing grows labored. Dread quickly fills my mind. Isabella? Isabella? Are you all right? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose's group joined us in the parlor. I want nothing more than to say no, I'm not all right. I want to leave this place. Because I remember everything as clear as day. Even the woman with the meat feet. The letter and that woman in the attic. It's real. The letter. I I'm sorry, I didn't know. Careless. I've been so careless. How do I even tell them without looking like I've gone mad? Ooh. Okay. Uh, uh, we might save here. Yep, you save slot. Um, all right. <laughs> the question is, do we show Rose the letter that will take us up to four in our chain letter streak? Um... And that feels like either a really good or really bad thing. Um, but it would feel shitty to keep Rose out of it and not let her what, know what's going on, right? Um, but who exactly... So careless, how do I even tell them without looking like I've gone mad? Should I even tell them? Let's show Rose the letter. Relationship status updated. Is that good or bad? <gasps> Marianne went down. It's weird that Rose isn't listed here. Or maybe it's not. Dun uh I blurted out before I could think twice about Rose, what I was going to say. We need to get out of here. This place is cursed. Oh wait, no. That's gonna ruin the sale. Oh, but I've already made the decision. We can come back later. Rose cast a nervous glance at the people in the room. Most are still engaged in conversation with their peers, but those curious enough to turn their heads in our group's direction have been giving her trademark saleswoman smile. A tight expression is on her face when she pulls me aside. Isabella, we've already had a conversation about this weeks ago. Those are just stories. I'm just I'm stories. I'm that it's not. I saw something in there. It's not... It's not human at all. I thought it was just nothing, but... Isn't this letter proof enough? She gently reaches out to pluck the letter, the, the paper, off my hand. Without even taking a side glance, she folds it back neatly. Oh! Lame. Look, I'm really getting worried about you. I know you want to see this open house through, but your condition is more important. Give me a few minutes to wrap things up here, and I'll drive you to the nearest hospital. 
No, no! You don't understand! There isn't a condition, Rose. No concussion at all. I'm fine. But this place isn't, and you're being stubborn about it. Before Rose could open her mouth for a retort, a hand lands on both our shoulders, pulling the two of us a distance closer. Now, now, ladies, what seems to be the problem here? Demons! Nothing, sir. I just had to clarify a few things with my colleague. Well, it certainly seems... intense. A smile fits the two of you better, in my opinion. Especially darling little Lily here. He gives my shoulder a gentle squeeze, with an inscrutable smile spreads spread across his face. Isabella, sir. Of course, of course. But my point still stands. And with two beautiful Right? Fuck here, that. He, he, God, sure. he seems like a turbo douche. And I'm sure little Lily here would certainly appreciate it if you remove your pretty hands from her, darling. That's right. The pressure on my shoulder lifts as soon as those words leaves his, leads, li leaves his wife's lips while the scowl on her face like a splash of cold water. It's almost impossible to miss the displeased frown on Miss McCullough's face. realization that we might lose the sale because of my outburst instantly dawns on me. Rose will be beyond pissed, and I'll have to go back to eating those instant I think noodles. I need to step out for a while. I'll be back. Bowing my head, I mutter a quick apology. Uh, and gather my stuff to make a quick exit. It doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not. I've caused trouble, and Rose can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I know, right? I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabel, like, Hannah's wait. kind of a snack. Like, I'm, like, Team Rose, but Hannah's a snack. The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face, because her expression instantly shifts from something gentler. Eyes softer, a fond smile spreading on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on. You didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And... look. Both. She hesitates, completely trailing off, before shifting her gaze down to her hands. A small gesture to stall. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. It's that stupid the letter again. My hands stiffen when she gives it back, but I take it never nevertheless. More as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. Damn it, but she still didn't even see it. I'll throw it away if I can. We're supposed to show it to five people, and only three have seen it so far. But I have this nagging feeling that one way or another, it'll find its way back to me, regardless of what I do about it. Not if you, like, burn it! Rose, this is... You have to let them know about... I know you want us to get this sale so badly... And we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. But I think... Look. Uh, yes, I showed Isabella. Rose the letter. If we are going to do this... She didn't even look at it. Very I don't upset. Know, this big. I need you in top shape. And the way you are now. My mind stops. What? Wait. No, I can still work. I just need to get myself together. Oh, lame. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, hey, it's your own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're... you're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere. I can see you, and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself, and I honestly could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over, and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She clasps her hands together in front of her eyes, pleading in front of her, eyes pleading for understanding. And I do understand. To some extent. 
That doesn't mean I'll feel any less awful. Whether at myself, at the unlucky turn the situation has taken, or for her, I don't really know. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A I mean, yeah. Yeah, obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. He called me a noob, and I don't <laughs> even know what that means. Oh, you're precious. <laughs> As the memory, we both bust into helpless giggles, earning us strange looks from the guests milling about the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps that may have happened. Little things you learn to appreciate, I guess. So, are we good? I mean, yeah. I'm still not okay with it, but... Rose does have a point. Because she has thorns. Ha 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 ha. It's better for me to step out of this one for now. This cursed I demon house. I anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. Grab my demon slaying I'm not sword. An invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. It's not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just... Stay here, all right? Don't even think of going anywhere. Don't tell me what to do. Maybe You're not my real dad. Here, and I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. At least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you, okay? She's gone before I can voice one word of complaint. Okay. Left with nothing else to do, I found myself drifting back to the foyer. Uh, I need to take a quick break, and I will be right back qu quite quickly.
Okie dokie, one of the hazards of staying hydrated, boys and girls. Okay, let's get back to it. <sighs> Left with nothing else to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. A few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass windows. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderlies, gathered some ways across from me, is occupied in a friendly banter about which one would cost more to buy. A little argument here, and occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right. I do need a break. You just started working today, girl. Maybe this afternoon's hangout will help. Speaking of, I should call Ash. It's a few hours early from what I've told him, but he did ask for me to call once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered, so I might as well take it. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that he'll ever accept the latter, personal convictions and all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable in him, admirable in him despite his tendency to annoy me the hell out of me, it's that. Well, whatever way it works, a free ride's a free ride. There's Rose's offer, too, but despite what she says, I know she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without me assisting. Bothering her for a favor as small as this is the last thing I want to do right now. A couple of minutes and a few prayers of asking for a decent signal later, the call finally connects, and... Shit! What's up, Bob Ash from Deluxe City? Back at what? How loud is this thing even... Sharpering fills the entire hall, disrupting the, the pleasant quiet that settled. Soon enough, his hand, heads begin to turn to the source, mine included. My eyes dart around the small crowd before zeroing. Okay, I, I, I gotta, I gotta turn you off. Okay, sorry, I just could not physically talk with that going. I just had to turn the volume down, so even though it's still loud for you guys. My eyes dart around the small room before zeroing in on a lone figure, crouched behind the same group of old people checking out the decor as moments ago. He's facing away from me, fumbling with something in his hands, but I don't need his face to see whose it is. I'd recognize that dumb parka anywhere. Without bothering to end the call, I march towards him. After what happened today, I'm really not in the mood to deal with this. Okay. After sex is something I'll surely regret later for not having recorded. Ah! He jumps and lets out an undignified yelp, followed by his phone slipping from out from his grip. It bounces from one hand to the other in his poor attempt to catch it, but ultimately falling flat on the floor with a resounding clack. Kind of feels sorry for his phone. And the floor. But it's not every day you can catch someone like Ash off guard and get a reaction. Damn his stupid detective senses. I'll take every ounce of victory I can get, no matter how small. Eh. An awkward pause passes between us. A blink. A cough. He makes a face. Out of what? Eat, probably. And then, in a too-quick motion, he ducks and retrieves his abused gadget, while a grin threatens to break out on my lips. He doesn't meet my eyes when he straightens, but a flush has crept up his neck and his cheeks. In another universe, where he, we haven't known each other for five years and suffering through this teasing, through his teasing isn't a day-to-day -day occurrence, chances are I'd find that adorable.
endearing, even. Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of world. The way things are, I'm already content to see him out of his obnoxiously calm and collected disposition. Hello to you too, scaredy cats. I could stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. What? And miss that look on your face? <laughs> no way! Oh man, I should have taken a picture. I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. Talk to yourself. You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? For a moment, he looks like a cat that swallowed the canary. Suddenly, checking every nook and cranny in his phone for any damage or scratches seems to be like a more interesting activity than explaining himself. Ash? I could be looking to buy a house. A mansion? Yeah, why not? Did you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. Yes, because that's how you decide if a house is haunted or not. He's messing with me. Ashton, I am not in the mood. What are you doing here? Why are you mad? He catches a glimpse at some point behind me. The parlor? Curious, I follow his gaze, but before I can figure out what has caught his attention, he places a hand on my shoulder and turns me back to face him. I just finished working on something, so I dropped by. I still didn't see how his work had anything to do with why he was here. In my confused look, he drops the hand resting on my arm like he's touched something particularly hot and casually rubs the back of his neck. Girl, he is so into you! And I, uh, I said I'll see if I can pick you up. It turns out I can. Uh, free time. And girl! I'm girl, he so is so into you! Uh, figured you'd still be busy, and so I roamed around for a while. Oh, you should have mentioned that sooner. I was about to throw you out. Throw me? Hey, I was given a pamphlet. I yeah, think it says she's a Gemini. We have mandatory sign-in sheets for clients, Ash. I didn't see your name <laughs> on it. And you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normal people actually follow an etiquette here. Right, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and... No, wait. I wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said... <laughs> Never she mind. is a precious wee airhead. I was just about to leave anyway. Wait, what? Now? Something must have shown in my face because he pauses and gives me a long, hard stare. Something I forget how... Something I forget how easy reading... Wow, that's... I don't know if that's me or the, the sentence. But yeah, no, I, I noticed that she was Filipino. Yeah, that's really cool. Sometimes I forget how easy reading people is for Ash. Okay, it was just me. Uh, given how often he looks as if everything around him is a chore. Oh, I avoid his eyes, hoping he'll drop the subject and won't ask any more questions. The last thing I want to do is tell him what happened. Especially the part about the letter. In fact, he's the last person on Earth I'll ever think about telling it to if I can help it. Which means, you know, you'll never be able to... You will not be able to help it. Sure, he's a dependable guy. God knows how many times he's helped me, even without me asking for it. God, he is so into you! But stuff like ghosts and the supernatural? He'll never believe though those, even if his ear, even if he hears it from a friend. Except, maybe if it's Becca. On a good day, the most harmless thing he'll do is give you an explanation why those things have no chance of ever being real. At worst, he's insufferable. He'll poke fun at every single chance he'll get. He'll poke fun at you at every single chance he gets. Ashhole. What did I ever do to him? He never does that to Becca or Zack. It's almost because he doesn't like he doesn't like them or something. I can already imagine how things will go down the moment I spill a word of what I saw. <laughs> nope, over my dead body. No, Ashhole is a uh, is a solid name. Before it catches his attention, I shove the letter deep into my bag. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, let's just go. Doesn't look like a nothing to me. Yeah, I was about to say that's the last thing you want to say. Remember? It's still early. And didn't you say your shift will end around five or six? What about? 
Hey, Isabella, wait up. So, let me get this right. <laughs> like... These... What... Where do these guys live that, like, all of them have such wild and varied jobs? Like, Becca's a teacher. Rose and Isabella are real estate... Team real estate agents. Zach is a, uh... Zach's a, um... A detective, it looks like? And, like, their friend is either an actor or a movie producer or something? That's fair. We do live in the middle of damn nowhere. Zachary Steele's movie premiere that night. I guess that doesn't say what he does on the movie. But still, like, that's, that just seems unlikely. Like, none of them, like, oh, yeah, I work at McDonald's or Starbucks. You know, that, that just seems... That seems unlikely that none of them have a normal job. A rush of air greets me as soon as the main door opens. Not the usual autumn draft, but it's still a welcome change from the stifling atmosphere inside the mansion. I guess teacher, yeah, is pretty normal. Ash's footsteps are quick behind me, the soles of his shoes thumping hard against the polished concrete in an awkward cadence as he rushes to catch up. He calls out once, twice, three times. The mansion still looms in the background. Whispers call me back. Shadows beckoning. Help me. Help me. Help me. I don't look back. We spin the we spin the ride to Luxborn City in a relative quiet manner, with only the radio's disjointed hum in the background to fill the silence. Occasionally, Ash will, Ash will reach out to fiddle with it until the signal settles or it's on a respectable volume, but otherwise, he doesn't say anything. Neither do I. However, if the furtive glances he's sending my way are signs, I know there are things he's been itching to ask me since we left the mansion. I keep my eyes trained on passing scenery outside, in the small hope that my disinterest will dissuade him. Here. All of a sudden, he tosses something at me from a small compartment on his side. Wait, he has a compartment on his side? It hits me cleanly on the chin before I can make a move to catch it. The small package makes a soft landing in my lap instead. Ow. <laughs> Sorry. The glare I send him wipes the smirk about to form cleanly off his face. He clears his throat, focusing his eyes on the road again. I swear he did that on purpose. Ignoring him, I flip the half open I flip the half forgotten package on my lap. I won't say no to free food, but why are you giving away cereal bars? Hell yeah. I always have one on my person, and you look like you're about to pass out back there. Aw, oh, what a sweetie like pie. That? I don't even get the chance to deny it, because right on cue, my stomach rumbles loudly, and an empty, gnawing feeling in my belly becomes noticeable. No surprise there. I did skip breakfast and lunch so I could catch Becca while she was on break. I was hoping to get a small meal after. I guess with everything going on, I just forgot until Ash mentioned it. It's not like the hollow feeling's new to me, though. If anything, it's just one of the things I've gotten used to ignoring over the years growing up. Aw, poor baby. A thanks, then I tear open the package and start nibbling on the edge of the bar. Apart from the acknowledging nod, Ash doesn't say anything after that small exchange. For that, I'm thankful. After getting an earful from both Becca and Rose, it's nice to be able to just sit down with someone who's not going to nag at you. How'd the open house go? The usual. We got a bigger crowd than normal because of the property's fame, but really, no different from the typical open house. On second thought, it actually looks like a fancy party more than an open house. I've never felt so underdressed in my life. Weren't you there? I wasn't really listening. 
I should have asked someone to kick you out. No, you won't. And what makes you so sure? One, ever since you got assigned to this property, you've been freaking out about it. Rebecca's words, not mine. She's been complaining to me about how you talked your ears off, by the way. Two, despite your initial qualms about the place, you still took the job. Which brings us to three. It's been months since you last settled a deal, and you're short on money right now since you're back to your instant noodle diet. Hey. How do you even know about the last one? That's a good question. Rebecca. How does he know that? Anyhow, you're hell ah, fair enough. selling the man. Even if someone you know personally is in the tour group, you aren't going to just kick them out. Every single person who went on your open house is still a prospective client to you. Even me. He's not entirely wrong. Oh man, I walked right into that one, didn't I? I hate you. I really hate you right now. <laughs> His answer is a small laugh that kind of screams, I'm right, I told you so. I hate it when he does that. I'll have you know that there's already someone who's extremely interested in this property. So even if you expressed any sort of interest in it, I don't think they'd be willing to let you have it. Too bad. Provided I didn't botch, botch it with the rights. Ma'am Hannah, in particular, didn't look too pleased with what I did. I owe Rose a big apology. I hope she likes free donuts. You don't seem too happy about it. I am happy. Doesn't this look like a happy face to you? Really? And here I was thinking you found another one stuffed in the sofa. Or is it the wardrobe this time? He meant that as a joke, but how close it is to the truth made my blood run cold, and my own heart beat heavy weight in my chest. All at once, the letter in my bag feels a whole lot heavier, burdened by my own guilt and apprehension. Yeah, well, things happened. Stuff the right couple might not be pleased about. No need to make a fuss about it. It's normal in the business. You made them angry? Not angry. Just stuff happened. Like Aww. things. Did they do anything? Your but I'll miss you. Rights, was it? I can't answer that. Ooh. At least not without revealing everything that took place in the attic. Ooh. So, yeah, we're... But we can't, like, be straight with him. I, like, I want to just be like, oh, yeah, man, fucking ghost. Oh, yeah, but she's like, no, I don't want to tell him. Lying is almost never good. You keep asking me about dodge my it. work, we'll yet you haven't it. said a single word about yours. That's not fair. Both you and Zack have literally disappeared off the face of the earth. An over-exaggeration, but changing the subject to something else is still better than outright lying to him. Zack is bar? Bar? I'm not sure if it's because I'm just bad or because he's just very, very good at this. Zack is bang. Got it. He doesn't answer immediately, only momentarily shifting a glance over me, returning it back to the road when he has to make a sharp turn. Outside, the sun has already started its descent, casting a vibrant orange glow on the tall buildings. I wonder how long before we reach the venue for Zack's film. Checking the street signs outside, it appears Ash has taken the longer route, almost like he wants to spend more time in the car with you. Odd, he's probably trying to avoid the rush hour traffic. Also, I just, just noticed. Over chat? That's different. Linking your awful memes in the group chat box every morning isn't exactly a conversation. Uh, shit. Then I haven't had a meaningful conversation with anyone in years. Yikes. Also, I just noticed the Sleepy Sheep Inn. How precious is that? Excuse me. I don't hear you calling them awful while you're laughing at all of them. Thank Shut you. Up. And you aren't answering my question. It earns him a soft punch to the arm. I did laugh at them, but I'm not going to give him the satisfaction of knowing that I find most of them funny. 
It'll only make his head bigger. Stupid Ash. All right, all right. Lay off on the abuse. Remember that case I mentioned before? We've been trying to pin the bastard down, but it required more work than we anticipated. The guy's slippery like that. We got some good lead months ago. He recounts what he's been doing in the time we haven't seen each other. His usual work, the occasional small investigation, and the big case he's been stuck working on. Stuff he couldn't mention in the brief time we chat to each other online. Although most of it are tr the trimmed down version, the only things he can tell. He's always been careful about that. Even in the way he spins his answers to my questions. Just enough to satisfy my curiosity, but not enough to paint the whole picture. At one point, his voice takes on a strained tone when he mentions something about the big case, but I don't dwell on it much. That's normal. Right? Oh, jeez, what's go what happened? What happened? That's normal, right? I mean, who wouldn't be frustrated if you couldn't bring someone to justice because they kept slipping out of your fingers? Uh, hold on just a second. My computer kind of freaked out. Give me just just a moment. Weird, I'm not really sure what happened. Anyway. Um, that's normal, right? I mean, who wouldn't be frustrated if you couldn't bring someone to justice because they kept slipping out of your fingers? If I were in his shoes, I'd definitely lose my mind. His stories never cease to be entertaining, regardless. If things weren't the way they were back home, maybe I would have considered taking on the same job as him. Well, nope, not really. Mama would never let that. Ha hang on, hang on. The me the background music. I recognize that. I couldn't tell you where from, but it's like stock YouTube music. Weird. Anyway, like go back and listen to it if you're on YouTube. Like it, it is stock YouTube music, but the idea is still there. Oh yeah, there it is. Weird. Along with countless others, I've let go. Time passes quickly between us in this manner, and before I know it, we're already at the movie house. You know, you can say theater. A small crowd has already formed in the front of the theater as we arrive. Oh, hey! <laughs> Speak of the devil. The Lift Fest, short for the Luxembourg Born Independent Film and Theater Festival, attracts a bigger crowd annually, and this year is no different. I've only been to a few indie film screenings with Zack, so I'm not an expert on the matter. Pocket Chibi, coming soon. But I know that for people hoping to make a break in the industry, getting your film recognized by a local event is already a big deal. It's especially for a newcomer like Zack. He hasn't even won an award, but... Just getting a confirmation letter that the festival committee wants to include his movie in this year's lineup has already put a grin on his face for weeks. Speaking of the guy... He's impossible to miss. At six feet, he appears to loom over most of the moviegoers, and with his large build and heavy voice, there's no surprise when people give him a wide berth as they pass by. 
It's often easy to mistake him for someone intimidating at first glance. I did, back when I didn't know any better. Ash did too, I heard, once early in their friendship. Oh, there's Zack! Hey, hey, you guys! Long time no see! Zack's face lights up with a smile of his own. He moves towards us with careful steps, taking a significant effort to make himself smaller so as not to bump or accidentally hit anyone. Oh, what a sweetie. Typical Zack. As he nears, Ash casually raises his hand in greeting, and... And what? What's up, Z-Man? My main man. What's crack-a-lackin', my homie? <laughs> The awkwardness that descends within the immediate vicinity of our small group is palpable enough. <laughs> I feel that. Somewhere to our left, a girl giggles, and only then do I become aware of my mouth hanging open. I'm almost amazed how Ash can say that out loud with a straight face. Same. <laughs> almost. Considering his track record, I should be used to it by now. Zack seems to be. Yo, stop trying to act black, Ashton. And you're the only one who calls me Z-Man. <laughs> There's fondness underneath his exasperated tone. If this were any other person, he'd likely be offended. But years of friendship and familiarity have made those words harmless to others' ears. To the others' ears. Or at least enough for both of them to take it in stride. <laughs> it's been a while, Zack. I hope you didn't get into trouble again. Not much to get into trouble lately without you, I'm afraid. I'll let you know if something comes up, though. Nah, I ended up with chicken down stuck on me last time I agreed. I'd really love at least this year to pass without some sort of accident happening again. Hey, I take offense to that. It wasn't that bad. You really have no idea. A beat passes. And then, Zack laughs. Hey, I'm kidding! You know you can always count on me. It's a story only the two of them are privy to. Every now and then, Ash will enlist Zack's help on... something. Becca and I never really found out what the real deal is with those adventures, as Ash calls it. And both are willing to tell due... aren't willing to tell due to some unspoken agreement. Ah, oh, secret, super secret, boys only adventures? Ah, oh, hell yeah! She insists that if it's Ash, it's likely not something illegal or life threatening. I tend to believe her on that. Sometimes. Ah, oh, well, boys will be boys, I guess. I give Zack a small wave from behind, from behind Ash when his attention eventually turns to me. Bella! Huh? Rebecca's not with you. Is she still sick? Yes, yeah, she is. A bit. But she's up and went to work this morning. You know she doesn't listen to anyone that's not Ash. Yes, she does. No, she Cute. doesn't. You're literally the only person she'll listen to when she's feeling stubborn. And it's true. They've known each other far, far longer than any of us in the group. Childhood friends and all. But don't worry, Zack. She's probably on her way here now. She promised she wouldn't miss your movie. Isabella! So I see the wanted poster oh, there in the goodness. background. That's weird. Speak of the devil. Without warning, a hand grabs me by the shoulder and turns me around. Her shoulder gets grabbed a lot. Becca, you're just in time. I have to lean back a little with the way my face is almost invading her, my personal space. Her face. Whatever. But she places her hand on either side of my head to keep me still. She stares at me intently, concern filling her eyes. Becca, you're squishing my face. You. How are you? Are you all right? W why wouldn't I be? Rose called me earlier. Ah, those four words. Those four words tell me all I need to know. Since I don't have any family living close by, the only other relative I have here works on the far side of the country. And I gave my company Becca's contact number in case of an emergency. I should have known Rose would call her. 
I push Becca's hands away from my face, although she lets go. Her eyebrows remain drawn together. Oh, no, no, everything's good. Rose covered for me at work today. That's not what I'm talking about. How's your head? <laughs> Beside me, Ash snickers. I bite back the urge to elbow him in place of trying to avoid, avoid Becca's hand as she tries to reach out for the said area. I do my best to dodge her, all at once moving to hide behind Zack. Sorry for using you as a human shield, Zack. I don't oh, think he minds. It's nothing. I just slipped off a few steps on my way down. I blacked out for a few seconds and had a minor bump, but it's just that. You blacked out? Uh, it's not something to That's fair. Off. Yeah, if you Come hit on, your I head and you go unconscious, like, that's minor, bad. You, even know it's there. you should go to a hospital. This isn't a laughing matter. She did look pale when I saw her. Wow. Thanks a lot, Ashton. You traitor. I'll get you back for this. Just just, just don't go to sleep in the theater. What? Just make sure just to stay awake through the is. movie. If you mentioned this earlier, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. I'm sorry. Saw her. Yeah, they arrived together. Bella looked fine to me then. I don't know. Something crosses Becca's face, but it's gone before I can figure out what it is. Oh, that's... that's good. It's jealousy! Uh, you have to travel alone, right? At least. Good. See? I'm okay. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. And... and I don't want to miss Zack's film. We can always watch it some other time. <sighs> Sorry, Zachary. No, it's good. But you guys should really keep it down. We're starting to attract some attention. It's the premiere. The premiere's different. Right, Zach? I shoot him a pleading look. Zach's a sensible guy. He'll understand. Please understand. Not really. But Rebecca has a point. In the end, I think it's your call. Oh, for heaven's sake! Please, Becca. I really don't want to miss it. You're not missing it. We're just moving it on a different day so we can have a... Look, you guys. Ash's loud sigh unexpectedly cuts through the conversation. He's pinching the bridge of his nose as he speaks, something he usually does when he's getting impatient. If she says she's okay, then there's nothing we can do about it. It's not like we can stop her either. Besides, she's still acting like the same old Isabella to me, if she can still run around like that. Why are you taking her side? I'm not, but if she wants to watch Zack's movie with us, I'm not going to stop her. She's probably the one looking forward to it the most. Ash, that's... <sighs> you, of all people, should know... Tell you what, if I notice something amiss with her, I'll take her to the nearest hospital myself. Is that good enough for you? I already know the answer before Becca voices it out. When at last she releases a deep breath and nods, albeit with great reluctance, I immediately tackle her into a hug. Thanks, oh, Becca. Cute. It's always been you with him, isn't it? Did you say something? Me? Uh, nothing. Don't mind me. If you say so. Okay, guys, showtime's close, so I think I'm gonna get us some snacks. My treat. And then let's head inside. Uh, anyone here has a smaller bill? I think I do. Hold on. I pull myself off from Becca and get my wallet from my bag and... What's this? Oh, it's already in Ash's hands before I can even react. Find him. Becca and Zach are both giving the piece of paper an intrigued look. Haha, -ha, that's six people! We've we've fulfilled our contractual no, obligation! The you curse is lifted! Dobby is free! Care. Give it. <laughs> Looks ancient, too. Why do you keep this around? I try to reach for it, but he holds the paper way above his head. I've never been particularly sensitive about my own height, but right now, I really wish I had have that advantage over him. Ah, oh, damn it! No, open it's it! It's not like it's a love letter. I don't see any reason to... Hold on a second. This is, isn't it? Even if it is, it's not for you! Okay. Now I'm curious. I'm telling you it's nothing like that! It's... Rest of my words are lost when he unfolds the paper. 
Come on. Look at it. Yes! I can't breathe. My heart is stuck in my throat, pounding, uh, threatening to burst out. The curse is lifted. Dobby is free. <laughs> Six people have looked at it. We're, we're, we're one better. We, we have shown it to enough people. We're fine. We've broken the chain letter. Vaguely, I note how my hands are trembling at my sides. Clasping them together doesn't do any good. They're still shaking, but I hang on to them regardless. Awful sick weight has taken its core in my stomach. Back in the open house returns full force. How do I fix this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this? Someone, please. Also, like, just like a, I, but like Becca's like drawn avatar looks so cute. Okay, it looks so cute. I can't stand it. Just those big anime eyes. Today is turning out to be a horrible nigget mayor. Send this to five people, or else. Well, that's... interesting. Um, guys, I think we should listen to Bella first. Aren't you a few days early for Halloween? Yes. Ash waves the paper in front of me, giving me a fleeting glimpse of its contents. I don't need to see it. I don't want to see The letters, the words, every stroke written in blood is already embedded in my mind. I mean, it's not like there's a lot to keep track of, right? Maybe I should have just thrown it away when I had the chance. That way. That way. It's not a prank. It makes all of them stop. Even I am surprised with how steady my voice is. What did you say? This isn't a prank! I saw something! Hold on. Are we still talking about this paper? Or is it about the urban legend again? Both. I know it sounds ridiculous. You're saying this is a primitive version of a chain letter. And now that we've seen it, we're now cursed. Yes. You've got to be kidding but me. But I'm not cursed anymore. See, so that's fine. I didn't want to tell you guys. No more meat feet Isabella, for Isabel. Aren't you taking this a bit too far? It's not a joke. Will you guys listen to me first? I saw something in the house earlier. It stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have... Right. It did, and in, in an alternate universe, kill Isabella. you. Even someone gullible would find the logic in that screwed up. There's also no way in hell that this supernatural shit is true. Ah, it's she was right. Real. What do you think I saw? A hallucination? A delusion? Didn't you say you fell down some stairs? So maybe Rebecca's right. It happened after, when I was trying to get away. <laughs> I know, I was about to comment. Room with that thing. Like, she is like straight Cheshire cat right now. Like, those eyes are so intense. <laughs> like, oh my god. <laughs> right? <laughs> We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Why don't you believe me? We are, and you know that. But this thing and that thing has got nothing to do with the other. When Rose called earlier, I thought she's just exaggerating. But based on what I'm seeing right now, maybe it's better if we really postpone this for now. Don't bother. Without another word, I snatch this letter out of Ash's hand and stuff it back in my bag with more force than necessary. I'm tired. Tired of playing the game. I got cursed, saw a ghost, probably lost a sale, got kicked out of an open house I'm supposed to be hosting. My own friends won't believe me, and all of them think I'm crazy. To top it all off, there's a dull ache at the back of my head begging for a little attention. I can't afford to give a little attention I can't afford to give right now. Honestly, there's only so much a person can take within a single day. I just want to go home, curl up in my bed, and never think about today. But before I can take a single step away from the group. Guys! 
Zack rarely ever raises his voice when there's a point he w even when there's a point he wants to drive home, and hearing him take on that tone completely throws me off. Even Ash and Becca. Whatever harsh words yet to come out from the argument immediately die on our tongues. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. And hey, ain't this supposed to be a happy get-together? We haven't seen each other for months. I I'd really love to know what y'all have been up to. I only ever get to talk to Bella over chat. Please. He has a point. Ash, for all his attempts to look cool and distant, has also been looking forward to this event. He took the time to call this morning for a reminder. He never does that. Becca, too. I'm pretty sure that's another reason why she got out of bed today. Yet, despite Zack's attempt to lighten things up or Ash and Ash's and Becca's acquiescing gestures, the tightness in my chest remains. I should have just kept it to myself, or at least, or at least went with the idea that it's a prank. If I did, things might not have turned out the way they had. No sour mood, no bad vibes. Careless, so careless. All right. I think we should stay for the movie. But, there was more talking to this than I really anticipated. So, my voice is actually kind of to the point where it's starting to get shot. So, I think that's going to have to do it for the letter for today. Um, uh, I'll be uploading this to YouTube. Um, so, if you missed the stream, you can watch it there. Or, I guess, watch it here. Um, hi. Hi, YouTube. Um, but yeah, um, uh, thanks for stopping by, um, Cassandra, same time next week. Um, but yeah, I had a blast and I'm looking forward to, uh, doing it, uh, next week. So thanks for stopping by and I can't wait to play some more of this.